Dear aspirants, I am delighted to announce our program which is going to start on 1st November that is upscale. It is having a theme UPC confidence covenant because if prelims elude you, your money returns. Such a confidence I am expressing and it, it is not huge money too at the same time but I would like to show the confidence upon my team, the research and development that they do with regard to PYQs and also current issues that they are developing with respect to this reverse engineering model, K current affairs reverse engineering. And if you thoroughly trust it and follow it sincerely, even a small undergraduate student who have completed just recently the graduation, who does not know anything regarding UPSC, who wants to prepare for the first time and a veteran aspirant who, uh, who are unable to clear this examination several times giving attempt either prelims or mains. This UPSC confidence covenant within 100 days going to cover 1000 marks of mains and 10,000 MCQs plus 1000 mains question answers based on entirely previous year question themes. However, we set new questions, we will be giving you keywords and detailed explanation. 300 hours of intensive marathon class session will be going on. And here, I would like to announce you that this is a kind of a huge teamwork and lot of confidence that has uh, inherently in it, not with respect to the money that we get. And our previous students who are ascribed to various tests of group 1, group 2 may also come to this session. This is a 100 day session and not only the session but also it is a reverse engineering model. You will be getting every Wednesday and Saturday these questions, 100, 100 questions and immediately the questions uh, will be having the explanation marathon session. All 100 questions will be done with the all 100 PYQs also associated with it and also you will be having a mains marathon, 20 questions will be given immediately on prelims day itself and uh, those 20 questions will be given a lot of intensive explanation through keyword oriented approach and recalling retention capacity for long dusting. So 100 days, 1000 marks, 1000 mains question answers, 10,000 MCQs based on entirely PYQ themes. And apart from this, we are providing care current affairs reverse engineering. So this is a big program which we have a lot of confidence in it. And all the aspirants who are still struggling to have a unique schedule which is exactly on the lines of UPSC are unable to cover an entire schedule on their own and need a sustained motivation and a peer group, a perfect mentor who can support you all the times, all the odds. Therefore, this program is a confidence building program that is UPSC confidence covenant. I think this program will definitely give you immense confidence and align your mind exactly on the lines of changing pattern and dynamics of UPSC. And coming to our program, this is upscale in the UCC having a team under this upscale program, UPC Confidence Covenant. And if prelims elude you, I am saying you that your money returns that is only merely 5000 rupees. Still, if you follow the schedule, still you are unable to keep this one, I will be returning you and entirely, right. This is not a one time investment that you are doing, it is not with respect to the investment that I consider, it is with respect to your time, energy your valuable, precious, young, energetic time that you are spending for this UPSC journey should be respected. That is most important thing for me. So, I hope this November 1st UPSC Confidence Covenant will definitely hit big in terms of results. I, I would like to see you not only in the final, I mean the results of this pre preliminary examination but also after the interview sessions, right. So, this is what I am going to uh, give you the confidence. If you genuinely trust it, just follow it for first one week. Then only you can opt this method of preparation. This is intensive marathon, intensive test series, intensive classes, 100 days, 1000 marks. Why can't it be possible? This UPSC can be possible. In one year, you can do four cycles of full length revision. If you have a lot of commitment, perseverance, passion and ambitious, right. And coming to this first article that is current affairs reverse engineering. Here only the relevant component that you need to think about is Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. Foreign Contribution Reg Regulation Act can be read in the form of MCQs that are displayed here. Consider the following statement with regard to Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. Here foreign contribution includes money earned from foreign clients in exchange for selling goods or providing services 
it is excluding the money that is earned from foreign clients in exchange for say, selling goods and services under this FCRA. So, first statement is incorrect. Why have they asked this question? Because it was asked in previous years in the UPSC regarding Foreign Exchange Regulating Act and Foreign Exchange Management Act, fair of MR related ones. Therefore, you may get little confused. This is passed in 2010 to curtail certain foreign funds which are going anti-national and anti-social activities. And coming to an editor of newspaper is prohibited from receiving foreign contribution under the act is the act specifically mentioned under its section 3. And next donations made by non-resident Indians will be treated as foreign contribution. No donation can be considered that is the NRS donation as foreign contribution regulation act. Okay. So, why have we chosen that question from this article because in news click this journals the journalists also arrested by authorities because of the foreign funds which are unaccounted and transferred to this news click uh, journalist organization and online organization. This foreign contribution excludes earnings from foreign clients by a person in lieu of goods sold or services rendered by it. Okay. Next thing the exemptions means these uh, companies or organizations or individuals may not receive any foreign contribution under this act section 3 clause 1. A candidate for election or correspondent, a columnist, a cartoonist, a journalist or an editor should never receive any foreign contribution under this regulation act. Next judge, government, servant or employee may not receive this fund in, uh, from foreign funds, okay, from a foreign person. And next member of any legislature and political party or office bearer thereof. This is uh, foreign Contribution Regulation Act to curtail malpractices that are related to anti-national and anti-social in nature. Next 3.21 lakh appeals pending with information commission report and this is clearly mentioning that the lacuna that is witnessed in this inter information commission execution with respect to this right to information act. The case backlog that is the West Bengal if it has to dispose the present cases it will take around 24 years one month time period. And next coming to the list of other states that is the Chhattisgarh will take 4 years and 4 months and similarly till Kerala it will take 1 year and Himachal Pradesh will also take 1 year time to dispose all the cases which are pending in nature now. That is what the re report came here that report name named as report card on the performance of information commissions in India 2020-2023. Report card on the performance of information commissions in India 2020-2023 clearly said and the major number of cases pending in which of the following states and the highest number is in Maharashtra and it is followed by Karnataka. Okay. And Tamil Nadu did not wish will uh, express any will to expose its pending cases with respect to right to information act. And what is the actual lacuna that we have found? Most of the case, most of the cases are due to the pendency of these cases under this RTI is due to the defunctionality of these commissions. And there are four information commissions in Jharkhand, Telangana, Mizoram, and Tripura which are defunct as no new information commissioners were appointed upon incumbent de de demitting office. Okay. And second thing is six information commissions are currently headless. There is no chairman for these six information commissioners, right? This is what the problem, the pendency of the cases that they are talking. Next, consider, consider the following statements with regard to Central Information Commission. It is not a constitutional body. It is formed under RTI Act 2005. So, it is a statutory body. First statement is incorrect. It consists of Chief Information Commissioner, not more than five information commissioners. Actually, it is wrong. Not more than 10 information commissioners. Next, it has sumoto power to inquire into any matter and Chief Justice Commissioner and Chief, Chief Information Commissioner, I am sorry, and other information commissioners shall hold office until they attain the age of 65 years and may be determined by the central government. Uh, so, that may be the wrong statement. I think I have given you detailed explanation with regard to this RTA Act, which is, and this is a quite interesting question also. Please go through this PYQ question. Here, information leading to incitement of any offense may not be produced by this RTA Act and information leading to disclosure that may constitute contempt of court, it may not be disclosed under RTI and information relating to cabinet papers regarding deliberations of council of ministers, it may not be displayed. However, conditional disclosure relating to information on intellectual property uh, that may be disclosed under this RTI act. So, this is this was a previous question, a quite uh, interesting question because you need to opt a basic relevant option among 
most relevant options a little confusing option it may be that is why we that was called as interesting question next coming to this one the first statement second statement and fourth statement both uh, all three statements are incorrect only one statement is correct how many of the above are correct they were asking here chief information commission was established by central government in 2005 under the right to information act it is not a constitutional body it is a statutory body and chief information commissioner information commission shall not hold office for a term prescribed by central government or until they attain the age of 60 uh, 65 years whichever is earlier and next it consists of chief information commissioner not more than 10 information commissioners so all three statements which were given incorrect there here corrected next Supreme Court divided on women's right to end 26 week pregnancy. Here it is very important that there, are, there is a contradictory opinion and ethical dilemma occurred in these judgments because two judges that is related to the judge Kohli and Nagaratna both have contradictory opinions here. Uh, the government of India with additional solicitor general of the union government Aishwarya Bhatti said that absolute right of autonomy to exercise her reproductive rights exercise her reproductive rights is not absolute right of a mother. Here we need to consider under this Medical Determination of Pregnancy Act 2021, which is stating that exceptional circumstances, the Medical Determination of Pregnancy is telling that, I mean it is stating that 24 weeks, till 24 weeks of pregnancy, you can go for termination of pregnancy under exceptional circumstances. What are those circumstances? that are necessary to save the life of the mother are in case of fatal deformity detected in the fetus. Fatal deformity detected in the fetus and necessary to save the life of the mother. These are the conditions. Otherwise, the unborn child also has the right to sustain the life after the birth, right? Therefore, it is not a discretion, a complete discretion of the mother to give birth to a child or not. There are certain circumstances under this medical determination of pregnancy to save life of the mother and also if there is any fatal deformity in the fetus then only it can be accepted. That was the statement given by additional solicitor general on behalf of the government of India as body. And this was agreed, this statement was agreed by the court team. Therefore, the Nagaratna, the judge, the justice Nagaratna has said that the interest of the petitioner has to be considered because she has certain social and economic obstacles to nurture the child. Already she had two kids and one year old, old kid only. Therefore, the third pregnancy which is undergoing, it is not feasible for her to sustain, right? That was the statement given by her. So, her decision must be respected by the court. That was stated by Nagaratna Justice. So, this is an ethical dilemma which should be considered because state say, said that we have responsibility for not only the generation that is coming out, but also the unborn child, right? This is what the government of India is saying. However, there are certain ethical dilemmas which has to be considered easy uh, with respect to whether uh, arguments related to feminists and also certain uh, arguments related to humanists, right? Feminism and humanism, a little conflict with respect to their ideological approach uh, that you need to understand when it comes to the society aspect. Next, consider the following statements with regard to Medical Determination of Pregnancy Act 2001, 2021, sorry. Here, uh, it covers married and unmarried women. Yes, it covers married and unmarried women. Even unmarried women can go, can go for termination of pregnancy. And opinion of the state level medical board is also essential for pregnancy to be terminated after 24 weeks in case of substantial fetal abnormalities. Next, name and other particularities of a woman whose pregnancy has been terminated shall not be revealed to anyone except for immediate family. No, not for except for immediate family. The third statement is incorrect and particulars of a woman whose pregnancy has been terminated shall be revealed except to a person authorized in the law, authorized in any law that is currently in force, authorized in any law, the law may change and also it may give such an authority whether he has right to know the termination of pregnancy of a woman and whose name it is terminated and who approached it, okay. So, such right to privacy has to be mentioned. Next, uh, so third statement is incorrect and remaining two statements are correct here. Why have we chosen this question? Because there were many questions with respect to the recent amendments that have came come into picture, right? Here, uh, Maternity Benefit Amendment Act 2017 was asked in UPSC uh, with in 2019. So, you need to understand the crutch facilities provided for a pregnant woman and also how many months of leave availability under this maternity benefit is also very important. Next. Cabinet approves royalty rates for mining of three critical and strategic minerals, lithium, niobium, and rare earth elements. 
here you need to understand critical strategic minerals are related to rare earth elements like uh, there are may listed out critical elements under this schedule under this schedule one of the part a b d uh, part a b c d of this mines and minerals development and regulation act 1957 which is amended several times and recent amendment came into picture on 17th august in 2023 this amendment is saying that in the parliament it was passed six i mean six minerals which are delisted among the other things six minerals are delisted including lithium niobium from the list of atomic minerals from the list of atomic minerals six minerals are delisted what is the benefit out of it if you delist these uh, delist from the list of atomic minerals under this mines and Min mines minerals development act regulation act here the benefit is the private players can come for the exploration and mining of these critical and strategic reserves and at the same time they will get certain concessions and royalties for it okay that is what the article is talking about very simple it is next coming to the statements that are related to science of science related to topics here consider the following statement how many of the minerals listed above are considered as atomic minerals for my uh, as per this mines and minerals development and regulation act here the policy may have a little coherence with the scientific concept here these are all components must be utilized for atomic purpose right atomic or nuclear or any kind of uh, space technology related aspects and other aspects also which is rare earth minerals right rare earth minerals so this uh, mines and minerals development regulation act keep on changing these minerals and listing them under this matter atomic minerals and their line I mean, licensing with respect to exploration and mining may also be changed according to the time and need requirement right so here lithium titanium beryllium niobium tantalum zirconium why have i chosen this one because 12 atomic minerals specified in this part b of first schedule of i have said you part a b c d as part of first schedule of this mines and minerals development regulation act right in this part a b c d omitted six minerals from the part b as atomic minerals out of 12 atomic minerals six minerals are omitted from part b of this schedule 1 of the mines and minerals development and regulation act those six minerals are mentioned here actually those six minerals are mentioned here these six minerals are emitted from part b of the schedule 1 of the mines and minerals development regulation act therefore none of the above is correct okay because out of 12 atomic minerals specified in part b of the first schedule of the act there are six minerals omitted from this list okay this those six minerals are lithium bearing minerals titanium and beryllium and also beryllium likewise all the listed above in the question right so why have we asked this question because there were many questions related to these minor minerals and major minerals and the regulatory mechanism whether it will come under central government or state government it is with respect to minor minerals like sand is a minor mineral it is regulated by the state government no central government interference involved here next changes notified in production linked incentive scheme for white goods here white goods are related to household large appliances large household appliances are termed as white goods like refrigerators washing machines and air conditioners and led light uh, emitting diodes lights these are coming under uh, production i mean white goods okay this is about white goods what is this production linked incentive scheme as you have known that it is in, in i mean introduced in 2020 to substitute in, in the, to introduce a domestic manufacturing export uh, domestic, uh, to support the domestic manufacturing and also act as import substitution very simple it is and it was actually part of this uh, mini, uh, it ministry i mean uh, under this uh, policy of electronics policy on electronics uh, under this it ministry to boost the domestic manufacturing and also incentivize these domestic manufacturers to uh, go for import substitution in these areas and mostly it focus initially on mobile manufacturing areas and 14 critical areas are also included the listed uh, areas you, that you need to just mug up once after listing it out under this production linked incentivization scheme because it is very important for substantiating in your main answers and coming to on the basis of various requests and suggestions received from production linked incentive scheme the white good beneficiaries as well as industry association has certain guidelines pro produce certain guidelines that there are certain changes notified in it okay the changes is to simplify the operation of the scheme as well as to improve the ease of doing business that is the major theme that they wanted to expose it yet next here refrigerators and washing machines are coming under in 1998 upsc sincerity examination has asked 
same question related to white goods that is why we have chosen that one. And coming to next question that is Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh says the twin success stories of Chandrayaan 3 and DNA vaccine. What is this DNA vaccine that you need to learn the first concept in the, under this article given in the BAB. And the second one is Inspire Manak. Median minds augmenting national aspirations and knowledge that is Manak. Okay, and also inspire, please let all these abbreviations to substantiate your answers in the way forward of your mains. That is important. Now coming to this DNA part. Yes, DNA vaccine is, uh, just read all the statements and choose out of it one. Next, a vaccine made from DNA extracted from infectious bacteria and a vaccine made from inactivated viruses. A vaccine that uses a small piece of genetic material from the pathogen. A vaccine made from a weakening live pathogens. Just remember, this vaccine does not use any live pathogen and this vaccine should never use entire pathogenic uh, code of the DNA code okay, and genetic code. So, it will only use the partly the genetic code of the pathogen, therefore uses a small piece of genetic material from the pathogen. The third statement that is given in the C is correct here. There is a question last year in the UPSC regarding Covishield, Covaxin and Sputnik V uh, with respect to these vaccines. And vaccines are a DNA vaccines, a type of vaccines that use a small portion of genetic material, usually DNA from the pathogen, they will be ext extracted such as the virus or bacteria related pathogens. This genetic material is typically a specific gene or genes that code a part of the pathogen, only a small code embedded in the DNA part of this pathogen can be extracted and that can be used for triggering our immune system in the body. Therefore, when introduced into the body, our immune system will get responded and DNA vaccine, this DNA vaccine should never use entire pathogen or live pathogen. Okay? They have been developed as a way to stimulate the immune system and provide protection against certain diseases. And next coming to our other article that is states told to send names to replace officials by October 2. Here EC transfers simply. 35 officials in poll bone states for laxity because to strictly implement the guidelines given by the election commission of India. Therefore, it has transferred 38 officials including district magistrate and superintendent of police. Here, the roles and responsibilities of election commission is important. Supervises, directs and controls the preparation of electoral rolls and the conduct of elections to the parliament and state legislature in every state and elections of office of the president and vice president. This is the whole and sole major responsibility of the election commission of India. However, it can also have, it can also execute its power to transfer district magistrate, superintendent of police in a state during the period of elections. So, two statements are correct here. Next, consider the following statement with respect to election commission of India and its members and the tenure of service and the eligibility criteria whether it is mentioned in the constitution or not, this is very important and how to remove these election commissioners, what is the procedure. Please remember all these fundamentals and read Lakshmikanth again that is called reverse engineering. By seeing the article given in the Hindu, you need to go through the static component that is called reverse engineering. In the form of MCQ, if you go through the PYQs also, it can enhance your 360 degrees approach of understanding UPSC. Next, coming to this, India launches Operation Ajay to bring home citizens from war zone, that is the war zone between Palestine and Israel. Here, what are the boundaries, the border states of Lebanon, this is very important. Lebanon shares certain boundary with Israel and Syria. It has no such boundary with Turkey and Jordan. Please go through this map once again. Here, Beirut is capital of Lebanon. It is adjacent to the Syria in its north and eastern part and southern part Israel and western part it has a boundary of Mediterranean Sea. Some of the shore of bond, I mean the Mediterranean Sea is along the eastern shore of the Mediterranean Sea is occupied by Lebanon, the narrow strip of land. So neighbors are Syria in the north and east and Israel to the south. There is no such Jordan or kind of uh, other states that are adjacent to this state country that is Lebanon. Next, going nuclear. For a growing economy like India, leveraging nuclear energy is critical to address climate change challenges and attain its zero goal. It is very important because Indian economy is growing rapidly. However, it is expected to surpass Japan and Germany, move up from number 5 to number 3 position before end of a decade. Therefore, economic growth is triggering such a demand for energy. So, this economic growth has to address this emerging economy 
has to address climatology at, at the same time the poly crisis. Poly crisis, the climatology associated social, economic and political challenges that the emerging economies must keep in mind because the developed countries are already in a stage of development and which are having certain targets to attain and meet the targets uh, and bringing climate resilient technology. They have certain capability and sustainable mechanism there. But with respect to these emerging economies while addressing human development index and also poly crisis associated with climate change, this is quite difficult for India to grow bigger apart from maintaining that economic sustainability with environmental sustainability. Okay, so that is what the author is talking about. So how will you bring this sustainability with respect to mines and minerals development and also the uranium, uh, I mean I mean, mineral, I mean rare earth minerals. And these mineral, the mineral basins, how do you explore it, how do you import a new technological innovations and making it part of this technologically driven economic growth apart from climate, I mean sustainable climatology, right. This is what the, uh, this basic gist that you need to understand where one expects maximum net growth in energy consumption should see rapid deployment here emerging economy countries where one expects maximum net growth in energy consumption should see rapid deployment of new nuclear technology capacity and at the same time credibly address the climate change challenge at global level. That is what important, okay. This is the major theme of this article. Not only this article is talking about such a theme, this is very important. The theme was several times mentioned in various articles of the Hindu and other sources also because poly crisis one of the terms denoted by one of the authors earlier times that we have discussed already and the next article is also going to discuss the same with respect to semiconductor manufacturing because Taiwan based semiconductor manufacturing wants to emit zero carbon emission uh, by 2050 this is the target therefore Indian government has to substantiate I mean substantiated support, hand holding support has to be given to the semiconductor industries and those two articles are more or less the theme is similar, similar. Such a theme may be possible in the environment related or economy related the paper 3 one question in the main spot. Next consider the following page with respect to the place and the state. Here Bhima Basin is located in the Karnataka and Mahadev Basin is located in Meghalaya and Karpa Basin is in Andhra Pradesh. Only one pair given here is correct. And coming to our 2019 UPSCPVQ, here again the mineral deposits which are regulated by very, I mean, which of the following countries in the federal system, following states in this federal system. Here, please go through this one, mineral deposition with respect to the uranium deposits, okay, in our country. Here, Bhima Basin in Karnataka, Aravali in Rajasthan and Mahadeg Basin in Meghalaya and Singbam Trust Belt in Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh Basin also important. In Kadapa Basin in Andhra Pradesh, there are few minor places that you need to remember that Kokunuru and Lambapur, Pedagattu, Chitriyal, Tumalapalli and Rachakuntapalli. These are important here and you need to understand the operating mines and also new mines announced here that are related to Singhwan Trust built in Jharkhand. Please go through this document once again. Next, Moody's message. Moody's message. Here, government must handhold semiconductor industry, nudge it to adopt sustainable practices. Already I have told you, this Taiwan semiconductor manufacturing company, a chip maker is adopting that zero goal in climate uh, emissions. I mean, with respect to global uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And India has to significantly work as per the Moody's report. And also the IPCC report also mentioned that to bring such semi uh, semiconductor manufacturing units into India, especially in the Ahmedabad, in Dhole, Dholehra, India has to, uh, I mean, support, India has to support this kind of new entity which is coming to bring such say, semiconductor chips to the global market. So, you need to balance this manufacturing unit because semiconductor is very much important for various appliances with this, these fabrication plants are in dire need of this, I mean, uh, very uh, dire need of large environmental footprint and it may emit huge greenhouse gases. And also it is considered, but however, it is considered as essential as oil reserves. Therefore, these semiconductors which are embedded, which are required to be embedded in smartphones, defense equipment and also renewable energy sector, wind, wind and solar energy panels. Here, the semiconductor has to be it, I mean, given highest importance by the government of India while addressing climate challenges associated with it. Therefore, it is quite difficult challenge for the 
manufacturing units to balance both the aspects. Therefore, the government of India must handhold these semiconductor manufacturing units, nudge it to adapt to those sustainable practices by observing and incorporating various models that are adopted by Taiwan related companies, which is a known place for the semiconductor manufacturing. And even Apple company is also sourced from this company only that is based on Taiwan. And semiconductors are usually made up of which of the following material? This is related to a little scientific concept. Here, silicon and germanium and gallium arsenic, these all are part of this semiconductor material, right? This is 1, 2, and 3, because UPSC in 2017 has also asked related to these statements. Each statement is given as one of the statements here. Please go through it. Here, semiconductors sometimes referred to as integrated circuits or microchips are made from pure elements. There are pure elements are also allies that is compounds such as gallium arsenic this is a compound but pure element that is silicon and geranium germanium these are also you refer to as integrated circuits the semiconductors which may be made from these pure elements and also the compound you please remember these things basics only and coming to our mains marathon because we would like to announce very soon that module wise mains marathon coming to the picture that is related to keyword approach after reading article which of the following keywords you need to impart in the original examination apart from value added component that can be derived from your side also okay this is a main marathon that is going to be started very soon apart from this current affairs reverse engineering all the very best and keep the first statement that i have said you in the mind that you please uh, join this upsc conference covenant as part of our upscale program to nurture not only to nurture for your preparation but also to mentor you throughout your journey until you get the success and see your 